It's a colossal project, an unprecedented structure that could soon become reality. A few months ago, the Chinese government gave the green light to build what could become the largest hydropower plant in the world. With a capacity of 60 gigawatts, the Matua Mega Dam would be three times as powerful as the current record holder, the Three Gorges Dam. It's an astonishing plan set on the highest major river on Earth, at more than 5,000 metres above sea level, the Yalong Changpo in the Tibetan Himalayas. Here, the construction company Power China aims to build the biggest and most powerful dam complex on the planet, estimated at $137 billion. On December 25th, China's state news agency announced that the government had approved the project after years of debate. It marks another step in China's race to dam the headwaters of Asia's great rivers. However, the dam site poses immense challenges for a project of this scale, not just logistical, requiring engineers from around the world, but also humanitarian. The dam could devastate a vast region, destroying villages and temples and displacing countless people. Geopolitically, India views the project with deep concern and is already preparing counter moves. The reasons and circumstances behind this unprecedented dam are anything but a calm, steady flow. They're a surge with wide ranging consequences we'll explore together. The Motua Dam is both a technical marvel and a geopolitical powder keg. While it's not unusual for China to spend billions of dollars on a single infrastructure project, the Motua Dam stands in a league of its own the project itself. As noted, total costs are estimated at $137 billion, nearly 1 trillion yuan. If that figure holds, and it likely will, Motuo would become the most expensive infrastructure project China is currently pursuing. It's roughly four times the price of the Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze. China's GDP was about 18.8 trillion US dollars in 2024, and Motuo's cost would represent roughly 3.5% of total public spending. A massive investment, yet still within reach for the world's second largest economy. Although Beijing hasn't released detailed plans, it's believed the dam could be operational as early as 2033. So the question is, why do it? The short answer, renewable energy. In response to growing international pressure, President Xi Jinping made a surprise announcement in September 2020. China would aim to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. As laudable as that goal may be, it isn't the only motivation. Beijing is also considering selling part of the power generated to neighbouring countries. That pledge was met with scepticism, and scepticism remains today. More than half of China's electricity still comes from coal. Overall, it remains by far the world's largest emitter. More than 30% of global CO2 emissions originate in China, and those levels have climbed steadily since 2010. In an effort to repair its image, China is trying to reduce its massive carbon footprint, partly because the country long served as the world's factory with all the pollution that entailed in 2003, China inaugurated the Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze River, which, at 22.5 gigawatts of installed capacity, remains the most powerful hydropower station in service today. The current runner-up is also Chinese. The Baihetan Dam has been partially operational since 2021. Its installed capacity on the Jinsha River will eventually reach 16 gigawatts almost one quarter of France's entire nuclear fleet capacity. Both projects prove that China can break records when it comes to ambitious hydropower construction, but they have also revealed controversy and negative side effects, especially in the case of Three Gorges. Experts estimate that while the Three Gorges project delivered renewable power on a historic scale, enough in 2020 to supply more than 80 million households, it also displaced at least 1.3 million people and destroyed significant archaeological sites and natural landmarks. Another goal, flood control for regions, 
long affected along the Yangtze, has been questioned by specialists, who point out that the dam has likely contributed to increased earthquakes and landslides in the surrounding area. The extent to which China remains undeterred by such consequences is reflected in the scale of its newest project now underway. Moshuo isn't just bigger than the Three Gorges Dam, it's designed to generate almost three times as much electricity. The ambitious and even shocking target is 60 gigawatts of installed capacity. To grasp what that means, consider this. It's only about 1.4 gigawatts less than the entire nuclear capacity of France, according to EDF's 2025 figures. Many countries, such as Thailand, Argentina or Egypt, could operate year-round on less than half of that output. Even China, the world's largest energy consumer, using more than twice as much electricity as the United States, could cover up to 6.5% of its total demand with this single complex. The implications of such astronomical power are striking and lead to the question of how it could even be achieved. What exactly is Power China building? And how would it work? The complexity of constructing and commissioning a dam like this is enormous, yet the underlying principle is surprisingly simple. Dams hold back water and release it through massive conduits equipped with turbines. The turbines spin rapidly, moving magnets through copper coils and electricity flows. In short, the plant's output depends on two factors. The height of the fall, known as the head, and the volume of water flowing through it. To build a facility theoretically capable of powering entire nations year round, the first and arguably most important step is choosing the right river. The Yalung Changpo is an extraordinarily large and powerful river that drops an exceptional amount of elevation. It rises on the Tibetan plateau, flows west to east and carves the world's deepest canyon three times deeper than the Grand Canyon. That's why China is so focused on the river's hydraulic potential, especially along a section where it loses roughly 2,000 metres of elevation in only 50 kilometres. Here, at the river's Great Bend, Power China's engineers would excavate roughly 20 kilometres of tunnels through Himalayan mountain massifs, some rising over 7,700 metres to channel water to the turbines and return it to the lower river. From Beijing's perspective, the site looks like a natural gold mine. But the Yalung Changpo Grand Canyon is more than just a geological wonder waiting to be harnessed. On closer inspection, the dam could bring serious consequences, geopolitically for India and Bangladesh, and locally for communities and ecosystems. By reducing and regulating downstream flows, it could jeopardise the livelihoods of farmers and fishing communities. We'll return to those concerns in a moment, what the Motuo project is and why China is so eager to pursue it. Now, we have to ask an equally important question. Where exactly is it? That sounds simple, but it isn't. Depending on whom you ask and their political view, you'll get very different answers. Ask a CCP official and they'll likely say, Motuo sits in one of China's five autonomous regions, high in the Himalayas. Ask one of the roughly 3.6 million people living there, and they'll tell you the dam is being built in Tibet by a foreign occupier that has controlled their land for 70 years. That resentment is fueled by the long and often violent history of major Chinese infrastructure projects in the region. A report published on December 5, 2024, by the International Campaign for Tibet, lists at least 193 dam projects built or planned in Tibet since 2000. Only 28% are currently operational, while another 34% are either in preparation or under construction. Those numbers may even be higher. Data is scarce or deliberately withheld by Beijing. According to the report, all of these dams combined could generate over 270 gigawatts, roughly equal to Germany's entire electricity production. The sheer number and scale of these projects raise serious questions about local rights. 
the group estimates that between 750,000 and 1 million Tibetans could be displaced or resettled as development accelerates. Its database already identifies at least 144,000 people who have been relocated due to dam construction. These dams don't just transform unique ecosystems, flooding farmland, forests, grasslands and wildlife habitats, while stripping entire mountain slopes. They also disrupt the downstream flow of water, sediment and nutrients that sustain life across borders, the organisation warns. Exact figures are hard to verify, but Tibetan sources claim a large portion of the electricity generated in Tibet is exported to other Chinese provinces. A 2021 article in Tibet Review reported that between 2015 and 2021, nearly 9 billion kilowatt hours of clean energy produced in Tibet were transmitted to 14 regions of China. Tibetans are rarely consulted on these large-scale energy projects, despite the profound impact they have on their land, cultural sites and daily life. To understand just how disruptive these dams can be and how strong Tibetan resistance has become, consider the recent controversy surrounding the Gangtuo, also known as the Kamtok Dam. The Gangtuo Dam is another major hydropower project with striking similarities to Motuo. It's located on the Jinsha River, another vital waterway in Tibet. Local Tibetans remain firmly opposed. The project would flood multiple monasteries, including the 700-year-old Wonto Monastery. Both upper and lower Wonto villages are set for complete relocation, even though thousands of affected residents were reportedly never consulted. The dam would submerge meditation caves, burial grounds, and pilgrimage routes of deep spiritual significance. Locals would lose not only their homes and livelihoods, but also be forced into newly built resettlement zones far from their ancestral lands. All of this led to something rarely seen in Tibet, a mass protest movement. In 2024, hundreds of thousands of Tibetans led by monks from Wonto took to the streets in peaceful demonstrations. They carried signs chanted through megaphones and staged emotional acts of resistance, kneeling in front of a monastery that was destined to be flooded, pleading with officials to stop the project. Authorities listened for a few weeks, then responded with a harsh crackdown. Reports emerged of mass arrests, home raids and long interrogations. There were even accounts of widespread beatings. Some of those targeted were elderly monks in traditional robes who had led the protests. BBC journalist Tessa Wong documented several cases that resulted in serious injuries. Information about the protests and the government's response has been difficult to obtain. Journalists have struggled to access the region, as restrictions have tightened further since the unrest. Even so, the blackout wasn't complete. Videos began to leak online, showing the unfolding events to the world. The images were shocking, but not without precedent. According to Human Rights Watch, China has forcibly resettled nearly one million Tibetans since the year 2000. The Gangtuo protests were one of the few moments in recent history when Tibetans dared to openly resist Beijing, and evidence suggests many paid a heavy price for it. Back to Motuo. China has not released many hard construction details. As of now, the plan is reportedly to begin building in 2029, with construction expected to take roughly four years, bringing full operation in 2033. Beijing has not published figures estimating how many Tibetans could be displaced by Motuo. We do know that China's largest Finnish dam displaced at least 1.3 million people. And while Motuo would be roughly three times as powerful, capacity doesn't directly predict social impact. Still, the consequences are likely to be significant. Motuo, Shilmetogiba, county where the dam is planned, is less populated than some other parts of Tibet where large dams have been built or proposed. Even so, extensive resettlement seems unavoidable, and not knowing the scale yet makes it more troubling. If additional sacred sites and monasteries are inundated, 
the cultural costs will be even clearer. There are also serious environmental concerns. This region is one of Tibet's richest in biodiversity. Altering downstream flow patterns is expected to disrupt that biodiversity, potentially severely. The area is also highly prone to seismic activity and landslides. The reservoir for the largest dam project in human history would be vast, and the sheer mass of water could have dangerous effects on regional geologic stability. There is a real risk of earthquakes triggering landslides, floods and debris flows downstream, warns a Tibetan researcher interviewed by RFA. As New York Times reporters note, Chinese authorities reported cracks in five hydropower stations in Tibet after a magnitude 7.1 earthquake in January 2025. And that's not all. It's not only Tibetans. Other nations also rely on the Yalung Shangpo slash Brahmaputra for water, most notably India and Bangladesh. A 2020 analysis by the Stimson Center found that China's damming of Tibetan waterways has far-reaching implications for downstream countries, especially India. French Senator Jacqueline Eustache Brigno, who chairs an international Tibet group, has warned that these numerous dams could affect the water resources of up to 2 billion people. India and Bangladesh fear that Motuo will alter the river's natural flow, disrupting access to water for farming, drinking, and other essential needs. India is sufficiently concerned that it has considered counter-projects to offset potential impacts, including a hydropower scheme in Arunakul Pradesh Pradesh, with an output of around 11 gigawatts. Another reason the project is controversial is the lack of detail from Beijing. China has provided very little hard information. According to the New York Times, even the basic design of the dam remains unknown. Motuo also lies close to the border with India's Arunachal Pradesh, an area where the two sides fought a war in 1962. That history has revived tensions between the two Asian giants. In response to Indian warnings, Beijing insists there will be no negative effects. That reassurance is met with scepticism. As some viewers will know, China has already disrupted multinational water systems. By impounding parts of the Mekong, it contributed to periodic droughts in Vietnam, Cambodia and Thailand. Beijing, for its part, claims a legitimate right to dam rivers as it has done before. To be continued. See you next time on Smarticle Weekly.